Do the do the uh, black crazy sound effect. <laughs> yeah, very light. Yeah, very light. Okay, yeah, no, no, literally two people. Yeah, two. Are gonna understand that. All right, so to start off the podcast, we're gonna have you say the lyrics to Mob Ties. Uh, I'm gonna plead the fifth. My lawyer advises that I do so. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Has Discusses. What is up? We are live from the Hash Lair. Hash Lair. And Bruno's over there chilling. He's a guest on the show too. His brother Mars is not here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bruno Mars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna be talking about Peacemaker. We just finished watching that shit. And um, oh, Mike, the microphone is in my face, dude. Look at this. I got you. Mia. Yeah. Hey. That's perfect. Beautiful. All right, so I'm just. Do you want me to move it over here a little bit? I don't care. All right, we're good. Um, so Peacemaker kind of takes off where uh, what's a TV show? We're with um John Cena. It's the actor. He's basically a mixture of Captain America and the Punisher, set in the DC universe. And it's like, it's all written and directed by James Gunn. There's a couple episodes, or one or two episodes directed, directed by, by some randos. Randos. Which is not, I don't have a problem, because at least it's still written by, you know, Gunn. Yeah, the vision is still intact. The vision, yeah. Um, to, you know, one person who can handle losing their vision better than Wanda is Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, my, this Mikey guy is on fire tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um,. James Gunn writes and directs it, and it takes off where it, where you know Suicide Squad by James Gunn the film. The Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad, not Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad, and you know because um, also this is full spoilers because like we don't have time for that shit. We're probably gonna go for like an hour. Probably not. You know he's been in my crib for a while, so hey, like over. I'm now. I'm like, hey man, it's been real. See you, bro. All right, see you, bro. Hey, I'll, I'll so see. so like, we're gonna go over for thirty minutes. Just spoiler talking about. Peacemaker, the TV show on HBO Max, and we're going to be talking about, you know, the film that preceded it, The Suicide Squad, and the other Suicide Squad film, um, because he, me and him are probably going to argue about James Gunn's Suicide Squad movie, but I know that you like, you at least like the show, probably way more than the movie, yeah. uh, the Peacemaker show, and, um, honestly, what I do know is that the next Suicide Squad is probably going to be awesome. But I hope it doesn't have much to do with um, the Peacemaker TV show because I, I kind of would rather them be separate. Like a standalone, I feel that. But but I think that at least at least it did the Peacemaker did get renewed for a second season, so that has me happy. Um, has me jumping for joy. So at the end of the Suicide Squad, uh, like, what did you think of the ending of the Suicide Squad film? Did you think it was a good ending? Like, which part? You mean, like, Peacemaker's still alive or what? Which ending? Like, the, just in general, the bad the, starfish dudes. Yeah, pretty much. What'd you I think mean. Of that was just it, it was just like a standard ending I didn't think too much of it like yay hey, everyone's happy you know sacrifices were made and stuff and the cool people at the whatever it's called the bad guys they went against Viola Davis and they saved the day and the superheroes were all happy and everyone's happy although like a whole I mean what one like error or not error but like discrepancy was like didn't like an entire like city just get like killed like millions of people are now like dead or like without homes and we're just supposed to be like yeah dude you know that's just happening. well that's the thing though is um dc doesn't have a sokovia accords oh yeah dude the um the civil war document captain america like you know what i mean so like i mean and it's james gunn and with the action that happens in his movie it's very unapologetic like james gunn's very unapologetic like in real life you know with the whole yeah, the whole Twitter thing. Yeah. Going to that now. And, um, and with the action, because a lot of it's just like, you know, oops, uh, this guy that tags along the whole movie gets killed the first time, or one of the first times he gets scenes of action. Remember the fat guy? Yo, that was, that was the, the best part of the movie. That was that, so I love funny. that so much. And I love how they tried to do it in this Peacemaker thing with the nurses that they captured. And they're like, nope. Nope, not nope. gonna do it. Nope. We're gonna have to take your car though. That <laughs> shit was funny. <laughs> I'd be giggling. I'd be giggling. So at the end, you know, they fight the starfishes that take over humans, and like, you know, 
the villain in that movie, it's like, you know, really, who gives a fuck? Like, like the who, the, I already forgot. Oh, yeah, it's the big cranium dude, right? That fucking, like, but then, yeah. like, it turns out that the mega starfish is the actual bad guy. Wait, Whatever. Wait, wait. The, the real uh, villain. The, the shark, the real villain is ourselves. Yeah. Not Peacemaker. <laughs> what a sick joke. Or what a joke. Um, what I did like is, um, the, the uh, what the shark guy and how he was like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, that was cool. I did like the shark guy and the Suicide Squad thing. But what I'm, the Suicide Squad. Thing. So what I want to say though is I do like how the end of the movie set up this show. It was very well done, and they they had the um, what's the guy's name? Economos. The Economos. The he, he like you know him and the, the the people they they knocked out um, Amanda Waller who wanted to blow everyone up you know for disobeying orders. And then basically they got demoted on a side mission with Peacemaker, Peacemaker. who survived the shot. Holy! At the end, whoa! And basically, you know, he Peacemaker gets out of prison, and you know, the Peacemaker or not out of prison of, of the hospital, and is told to join a mission to fight butterflies, which we'll talk about later. And what I did like about, you know, this this show is, like, how, how like, how they, the Peacemaker's backstory is very well done and how, you know, it's very realistic that, like, you know, someone who looks like him and has the philosophy of him would live in a trailer park. Like, I thought that was a good little touch. Like, not, like, a suburban, like, he lives in a, like, a, a red, blue, uh, you know, red, like, fucking trailer. You know what I mean? That's just kind of funny to me. America. America. Yeah. Like, um, what about Peacemaker himself or his backstory did you like? Um, I mean, I like how he's, like, in the beginning of the show, he's pretty much unforgivable. The only reason you're rooting for him, which I also think was interesting, was, you know, he's just the protagonist. Which, real quick, I want to touch on that. Um, they expect us, everyone, we hated, I mean, we love the hate Peacemaker and the Suicide Squad, but he was an irredeemable character. You know, he's just, like, a really bad dude. He'll just do anything for the greater good, whatever. No matter how skewed that opinion is, right? Or that ideology, whatever. So it's interesting to see him just go to the show and you instantly just like him just because he's the main character. But you still also hate him because he just has these, like, he's still super patriotic and all, like, the problematic traits that come with that, he still retains. So you have no reason to like him as a character. So it's nice to see, like, as the show goes on, it's not like he just randomly drops this in the second episode and now he's, like, a super PC dude or whatever. He's still a jerk throughout the entire show, and he's got to unlearn his past with ever. And I like how instead of him just being the way he is, like he was born patriotic, they show that it was his father, the White Dragon, you know, who really, like, put that in his mind from a young age. Yeah, and that's why, like, James Gunn has always been very good at, like... Humanizing, or what? Taking stuff from the comics yeah. and doing whatever the fuck he wants to him. Because, like, with the Guardians of the Galaxy, like, if you read the actual Guardians of the Galaxy, that's, like, barely the lineup that it started up as. And a lot of the characters, he kind of shuffled from, like, you know, different time frames and shit. And he doesn't... I'm just saying, James Gunn doesn't give a fuck when he writes shit. It's gonna be... It's gonna be his way. Because, like, the Red Dragon is not, you know, his father in the comics. He's just, like, some random villain. Some racist dude. Yeah, like, like, um... And like I'm, just, I just like that he's he. James Gunn's like one of the few comic book writer directors who is fucking fearless and is able to get creative, because a lot of them just like, all right, I'm gonna adapt the storyline, the six page, the six um issue storyline, like verbatim, like like um, I just think he, you know, not it's good to not do what Zack Snyder did. I think like Zack Snyder's a really good director, but like. I think he got creative later on, but like 300, it's not create. it's creative, but not really from a filmmaker standpoint. I mean, yes, by a filmmaker standpoint, but not by a screenplay standpoint, because it's literally written just to look like the comic book. And I'm glad that like James Gunn doesn't do that. Like he kind of does whatever the fuck he wants. And that's why the way the characters interact with each other is really fucking interesting. Like the vigilante and peacemaker dynamic is awesome. But he he's also like very unapologetic where he makes shit obvious. Like as soon as you go into um as soon as you like, you know, go in the restaurant and you see the guy like wave like, Yeah, I peacemaker 
and then you see Vigilante later, you literally just know it's fucking yeah, Vigilante. Yeah. Like, the fucking bus boy, dude. Like, I was, what do you think about Vigilante? Like, you like him? I, I think he's my favorite character on the show, because they managed to make a sociopath who is totally, you know, obviously just a terrible person who literally does not feel emotion or care about people, and yet they make him so, like, sweet and likable and just, like, enjoyable to watch. Like, he'll just, he, he talks about, like, you know, he'll kill someone for, you know, distributing drugs or something, but he'll also just kill someone for graffitiing a wall, right? He just doesn't care. Any crime he sees, he'll punish you for it and kill you. And I just think it's so interesting to see this this just terrible dude, and yet you still like him. It's like a similar version of Peacemaker. You know, I guess it's his past, while he was still, he still had that zealotry that his father instilled in him. You know, he just like, serve your country, do what you gotta do, stop all crime. And I feel like Vigilante's like, Peacemaker trying to hold on to his past, whatever. That sounds corny and all. But, like, he's just an idealized version of who Peacemaker was. So it's interesting to see this dynamic, like, shift throughout the show. But then he does, he's not just, like, a, like an obstacle or anything. He's still just an important character. I, I thought for sure he'd, like, Vigilante would die or something. Or he'd, like, end up being a villain. No, he's just, he's just a dude. And that's great. I like that. One of the few things that I really liked about his characters, about his character, um, Vigilante, is that he reminds me of somebody ripped right out of the kick-ass movies like really i i really think that he, he would be a really good character in the kick-ass universe and i'm not saying like that he that he copied kick-ass because like of the you know violent you know funny superhero guys that i'm just saying like i love kick-ass and i think that if anybody likes the movie kick-ass and hasn't seen this bro go go watch peacemaker it's a good fucking show it's violent it's, it's, it's bloody, and, um, you know, the villain is not that bad, but it's very, like, it's, it's, like, kind of a, a joke at this point, like, like, most of the villains that James Gunn writes, besides Ego, the Living Planet, most of them are jokes, like, like, um, Ronan, you know, mm-hmm. like, he's, like, not taken seriously by anybody in the fucking movie, um, Pretty much. I mean, like, yeah, the people that are fighting him, but, like, they're made to all look like retarded assholes. Mm-hmm. Every villain that James Gunn writes, a majority of them are ma- are written to look like stupid, retarded dickheads. And I'm fine with that because it makes you focus on the main characters because James Gunn's very good at writing ensemble pieces with a lot of characters to focus on. But I feel like that happens at the sacrifice of a good villain. Like, he has to focus on so many protagonists and fleshing each protagonist out that he can't focus on writing a really good villain. And I'm fine with that. But eventually, like, you know, that, that's got that's still a learning curve for him, to be honest. Yeah, I guess Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is his magnum opus then. In Facts. That regard. Facts. Like, because that's... it has a great cast. Probably, like, the biggest one he's done. <clears throat> with an equally compelling villain like he goes just great Kurt Russell's that soundtrack too I don't give a fuck bro also. that soundtrack's yeah. way better than the first one first yeah. one's still fire but like you know let's yes, be real. I agree second one's better like there's um the cats oh the Yusef Stevens cause his name's Yusef hey. Mashallah, my brother yeah what, what, father and son they played that right at the uh, the, yeah. the funeral man rest in peace on dude dude Mashallah, assalamu alaikum I hey, can't be saying that man Hey, a lot, a lot. Um, yeah, so shout out Yusef Stevens, shout out Allah. And um anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um what'd you think of the side characters like the blonde girl, Economos, like who's your favorite side character that wasn't super powered? Um You can't count Murr either. Because What about what about um Judo? kid or whatever his name is yeah Judah master yeah i like judo master a lot because dude like dude just shows up in like i think he has like three like major scenes throughout the entire show or throughout the entire season and he's just like angry and like beating people up and then eating like hot cheetos and i think that's pretty funny yeah because he just you know james gunn just understands i'm just gonna put this guy in and just like not do anything with him and he's gonna have like little substance and he's gonna be great and yeah, he's right. Yeah, like meaningless humor is really is better than like like not every joke has to have a meaning. 
Like, you know, and there's really no fucking meaning to Judy. And, and he's, I mean, he's still, like, I guess he's part of the plot, whatever. Like, he's an obstacle in the way of them, you know, unlocking these mysteries and stuff. And he has important information that he almost got out, and that was a whole thing for a bit. But then he also just disappears for three episodes, and I thought that was hilarious. And that was definitely intentional. So, I don't know. I thought he was a funny character. Yeah. I fucks with the Judah Master. I think that, um... And I'm not gonna say the, um... You know... What's her name? Hmm. The fat girl. Out of bio? She's cool. Yeah, she's a good character. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who the fuck is calling me? Yeah. <laughs> but, um... I think Economos is good. Michael Sweeney's calling. Um... I'm gonna text him. Shouts out Michael Sweeney. Shouts out Mike Sweeney. Mike Sweeney. He's got a large Rodi. Um, yeah, please subscribe if you haven't. Michael Sweeney. Now he, I know he's subscribed. Um, okay. Let me just put him on speaker. He gives a fuck. Or we're doing a podcast, bro. We're doing a podcast. I'm gonna hang up in ten seconds. You oh, should, you can okay. come over if you want. Okay. All right. I'm on the way. All right, bro. Bye. Um. So basically, you know, Economos was awesome. I think he's my favorite character. Very insecure guy like that. I think it's funny. He's, he's relatable. But, but, but he's kind of like... Pulls up the laptop thing. Starts typing. I'm in. Like That's like the only... I guess he like, you know, shoots people or, you know, he try, you know, he helps out a little bit. But he's just a hacker guy. He's not a hacker. He pulled out a laptop in one scene. He made that joke. Oh, shut the fuck up. Like, like he's a good he's a good character, but like, I I I love that shit. I love that joke. This hacker joke. Like, like, has anybody anybody in the comments? Let me know if you've seen Big Mama too, and you'll know the hacker kid, the guy that I'm talking about. Oh, and by the way, Zachary Levi was in Big Mama too as an FBI agent. Shouts out Shazam. Are you gonna see the Black Adam thing, or have you not even seen the Shazam movie? Huh? Shazam. Huh? Black Adam. Is that like a DC porn character star or something? DC character. Is that like a well, what are you kids up to these days? Your Shazam? Is that like a new like Spotify or a YouTube's or something? I don't know, you kids. So, so what do you think of um, Shazam? Yeah. Spotify, Spotify. Yeah. All right. I'm just, I'm just trying to say that. I'm excited for you know Shazam and Black Adam. Anybody, anybody that wants me to do like a like a video on Black Adam or anything, let me know in the comments, for sure. But the Justice League cameo, I thought it was so awesome, because we did not need to see the Justice League fight. Like we don't need that. Yeah, the fact that they out. showed late was like, oops. It's like James Gunn's like, I I had the budget for this. I really could have put them in for a big battle scene, but guess what? I didn't. Here they are, just like cleaning up. Because the real people who get down and dirty, you don't see on screen in the Snyder Cut, okay? Shout out to the Snyder Cut. I know Zach. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah, Zach and I talk a lot. I was, I, was, I was begging him for years to release it, and he finally did. Thanks to me. Yeah. I didn't watch Ooh. it. And I never will. <laughs> um... Oh, bro, it's better than the original version that was released on theaters. Bro, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> like, bro, like, who gives a fuck? Um, is this worth your HBO Max subscription? Nothing's worth your subscription money. Pirate it online. Like, what are you doing? Like, you don't need to be paying for this. Like, I don't pay for fucking HBO Max. Yeah, but it's definitely one of the 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 shining jewels of my HBO Max subscription as of late. As Your OSC HBO did. Max experience. Euphoria, Euphoria, Euphoria. Have you seen Euphoria, bro? There's not like gay sex in it. Oh, yeah. I, I love that. Because I'm Vito from uh, Supreme. Dude, it's a Soprano spoiler. This is only spoilers for Peacemaker. Oops. <laughs> yeah, put that at the start of the video there. Also, one spoiler. Yeah, it's it's going to be like Peacemaker spoiler talk with Drew Dumchins. That's what the title's going to be. But also one soprano spoiler. So the butterflies are are good villains. You know, we just kind of talked about how I felt about them just being body snatchers. But you know, who gives a fuck? It was cool that that at least like they're like in the head. Like it's not like they they possess them. Like 
like they metaphysically really or get in the brain, dude. That's messed up. Like, do the brain, but the, uh, they, they just like they do the ratatouille shit in their head. Like, like, they're literally in their brain, then like the human body was compromised after that for sure, dude. Yeah, it's, it's it's cool though, like how it's just like it's an excuse to have a lot of headshots, and um, it, it's fun. It's really fun. And I love when, like, they just do that. They go crazy, go stupid. Ah, go crazy. Ah, go stupid. And they go, ah, like, when, ah, like, that's just so stupid. Um, and I loved how the first time we see one of the characters that you have to kill and that they're out to get, it's fucking John Cena fucking them in their room. That's, like, that's funny because sex is funny. Yeah, sex is pretty funny. Sex is like, funny. Butts and stuff. Little, little butt, butt sex. Anyways. Oh. Um and uh, this is a this is one of the best lines I've ever seen John Cena say is the um like he pulls out a record that looks like a Kiss equivalent band and then it's like you know guys in makeup and he was like these were the good old days when men weren't afraid to be women like that shit is so funny to me I don't, I don't know why like I, I sh- this is also like a little not topical but like you know it says a lot about society or whatever. Like all these, uh, all these goddamn conservatives these days, but uh, shit was like that back in the day or something like that. I don't know if that's what James Gunn was trying to say. Maybe some irony, but I thought it was funny. I, I, I think it was like, cause you obviously like, he's trying to stray away from his father's political views, but I think it was kind of supposed to be like, um, he wants men to be masculine, but he like, is saying that. Because Peacemaker teams like the... I don't fucking know, like... The like, way I see it is, like, it's... He's, like, so naive, he doesn't understand that he's being, like, progressive, and, like... Yeah, that's... that's Yeah, that, that's good. That's good. That's that's definitely what he meant. Um, also, go buy, go buy a Soul's AT if you haven't. Shouts out Soul's A. Okay. Um, <laughs> go buy a Peacemaker CD if you haven't. They, get, they make some good records. Yeah, I'm good friends with Peace. We I'm good friends with Maker. Meet your Maker. Meet your Maker. Shouts out Almighty Bumpin. Shouts out some girl. Uh, shouts out Thomas Wright, the first and the second. Shouts and out the, the second third? For conceiving the third. For conceiving with the third. Mrs. Thomas Wright, the second. Yeah, that's her name. It's yeah. literally her name. Legally. On the documents. I was at the DMV when she got born. The DMV? You think people. Oh, uh. <laughs> 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 Okay, dude. I was gonna say something good. But fungu. But um, you know, what did you think of the end battle in Peacemaker? Because we were just talking about the end battle in Peacemaker. End battle. I thought it was pretty awesome, dude. Oh yeah, this is what I was gonna say. The butterflies, real quick. At the end, you know, they're like, "Join us, come on, we got a just cause and stuff." You ever watch the World's End third movie in the Cornetto trilogy? Yeah, but yeah. not for a while. Oh, but basically, if you guys have watched it, watching this YouTube video, uh, you know how they're like. Yeah, well, we're just here to, like, save your planet, man. And, like, we're literally just only trying to help you. So you should just join us. Because, like, at this point, we're really the only hope Earth has. But then they're like, nah, fuck you. And they're like, really? Yeah, okay. And they just decide to destroy the extraterrestrial beings, whatever. And they did the same thing here, and I love that. Where it's like, join us. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, like, 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 dude, like. He's like, nah. Activate human torpedo. Yeah, that's pretty funny, dude. I lulled. I lulled. I roared. I, I kicked. Yeah. Because then it's like, you think Peacemaker's a bad guy, right? You see the Suicide Squad and all that. He does all the stuff for the greater good to ascertain peace. The greater good. But then, like, you look at these guys, these butterfly creatures, and somehow they're even worse. So then in the end, you are rooting for Peacemaker. Although in the beginning, you know, he's a pretty irredeemable dude. You're like, hey, you know what? He's... <laughs> These butterflies represent the corporations or something like that. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> yeah, fuck. Nah, nah, nah. In the end, Peacemaker ought to be transferred to Sunford, Gloucestershire. Because he believes in the greater good. The greater good. The greater good. And he should allow minors to drink in the bars because it's for the greater good. But... On the note of the f- like the final fight of Peacemaker, I think that one of the best parts about the show are like the fights and the combat and all that. Like you could feel every single punch, you know, the impacts and all that. It's really well done and well shot. Yeah, there's like a lot of um, 
action. There's a lot of action in the show. It's <laughs> I don't know what else stuff. to say. Nah, but dude, like when he's like spoiler alert, when he's like punching his dad, dude. He's like, no, I love how there's like multiple like. There, I mean, there's kind of yeah. There's a multiple villain like. James Gunn, another thing that he's really good at and what he does good in this show is multiple villains. You know, the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and then, you know what I mean. Like, like with the ego and the, the gold people. <laughs> gold. The gold people. Good. Like, this one, the um, red dragon and then... Actually, it's white dragon. No, it's not. Look it up. It's red dragon. Look it up. It's white dragon. Look it up. It's white dragon, bro. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> um, his dad and the uh, butterflies, like he, they're two very good villains. I like the dad being uh, the dad villain is way better. Like red dragon's better than um. Shut up. Red or white dragon is better than white the butterflies dragon. as a villain. See, it's red dragon. Yeah, and his suit's cool, dude. Yeah, but it's totally just like racist. I mean, he, he looked like a Pokemon, like a racist Pokemon. Yeah, like a fan. Like KKK yeah. fan art Pokemon. Yeah, dude. Um But but but, but the, the, the um it was kind of like and I don't expect much because it's like, you know, he has a big suit and big suit for killing and you know, whatever. It's like like if I were to go up to a red, red dragon and be like White Dragon. What's your what's your what's your laser beam fan of? And he's like he, he's just gonna say, like, if I was in the show, like just like it's plasma beams made by the summer government. You know what I mean? Like it's just like, he's just like lasers, like like I think the masks were very creative, but I don't think like Red Dragon's weapon choices were creative. But I feel like that didn't matter because of the emotional depth of his character, and it made up for the lack of creativity on the weaponry and action side for him. The action was good, just like there's no cool weapons that he used. It was just I mean, like he was the weapon dude. Remember, he like just ran into that truck, dude. That yeah, was that, cool. that was cool. Oh, yes, here's Johnny. <laughs> no, here's here's. I'm looking for John Connor. Yeah, dude, ah, oh, it's tough. I'm I sorry, I, I can't owe you that forty five thousand, Tony. Yeah, baby, I'm sorry, the, I'm. The, Ralph, be like, I'm working with three hands over here. Yeah, dude, all my, all the people who watch uh, superhero shows exclusively are gonna know that about that one. I, my name's Pete the Killer. Took care of that one thing for you. All right. That's all you really got to say about the Peacemaker. Let me know what you all thought of this show in the comment section down below. you have anything else to say about the Peacemaker? Uh, no, watch it if you haven't yet already. It's different from most DC shows. I don't like this new DC trend. Or it's not new. It's been happening for close to a decade now of like dark and gritty anti-hero type characters just brooding and f collecting together to fight some evil big gray monster thing. I like what they did in this show. And they should continue in this direction. That we don't need big gray. Rough. We don't need big gray buttholes as villains. True. We need flowery blue Beams. being. I don't know. Shouts out to Chong China. Word to the wise: Remember Pearl Harbor. <laughs> Word to the, say another um Pauli Galtieri quote. Um, now. Uh, uh... Sun to Zoo. Sun Tzu, the Chinese general. Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu. In conclusion. Probably can't hear it. Shut up. Sound doesn't go but well. But like, comment, subscribe. And peace out.